What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will be showing you the top 10 best weapons in Skyrim Special Edition. And this is also the exact same for the old Skyrim as well. But for this top 10 weapons video guide, I have selected the best free two-handed weapons and the best free one-handed weapons and also the best free bows as well. I've also put in the best dagger in this video too. And you can find a guide on how to get each one of the weapons I'm going to be talking about down below in the description. I actually also suggest just favouriting the video right now so you can just come back if you ever make a new character. But I will basically be grading these weapons on a few things. Firstly, damage and usefulness. Two very important things when you're talking about the best weapon. Secondly, what character types will find them useful. So if you're a warrior, an archer or a sneaky assassin, you're going to have different wants and needs. And lastly guys, I'll be talking about how you can maximise each weapon's usefulness. So before we start this countdown of the top 10 list, let me just talk quickly about the Dragonbone weapons and Daedric weapons. These can both be found in Skyrim and can also be crafted. The Dragonbone weapons have the strongest base damage for each weapon class in the game. So for example, the Dragonbone Bow has the highest base damage in the game for bows. But to make these weapons truly overpowered and better than any of the weapons in my top 10 list, you must use the crafting skills, smithing, alchemy and enchanting. By exploiting some crafting trickery, you can very easily create godlike weapons like this you can see on the screen here. Ones that do over 10 million damage. This does make the game very easy and it does kind of ruin it, but if you do want to know how to do that, check out my guide on how to make godly weapons down below in the description. But if you're not interested in crafting, or you just want to get a cool collection of the best unique weapons in Skyrim, let's start this top 10 video with number 10. The Blood Scowl Blade. A devastating two-handed weapon. What this sword lacks in damage it makes up for in utility. The Bloodscale Blade itself though has a base damage of 21, which is four less than a Dragonbone Greatsword. What makes the Bloodscale Blade so much better though is its unique enchantment. When you power attack with the Bloodscale Blade, it will fire out a wave of energy that does 30 points of damage. This wave can literally travel 15 feet away from you, and it can even go through some walls. Usually though, you'll find it staggers most enemies that you use the power on. So it's especially useful as a defensive tool versus archers and mages. Because obviously, they've got that range advantage over you. So it allows you to stagger them and then close the gap between you before they kill you with their spells or arrows. It also works really well on groups of enemies that are like positioned together. Because if they're close together, you can just stagger all of them at the same time. I think it simply solves the weakness of two-handed builds because they struggle versus ranged attacks. But with the Bloodscale Blade, you can now fight back at range. And that's why it's got to get this spot on the list, guys. And also, guys, if you get the Become Ethereal Shout, this shout turns you into a ghost and it makes you invincible, but you can't attack other people and they can't attack you. Unless, my friends, you have the Blood Scowl Blade, because you can actually still use the power attack while in the ghost-like form, and the power attack will still damage people, and they can't fight back, so you're just invincible and you can still attack them, so it's pretty damn good. And guys, just to let you know, all these weapons can be upgraded at a grindstone, and you can use the crafting method I mentioned earlier to make them do tons of damage as well if you like. It's up to you how you play the game. But next up guys, we have number 9 in our countdown. The Ebony Blade. The two-handed katana-like weapon. The Ebony Blade itself has a base damage of only 11. And that isn't great. So why is it here on the list? Well guys, if we take a look at the enchantment, it says it absorbs the life force of foes, and it's strengthened by the blood of deceit. So basically, the weapon has an absorb health enchantment that can be improved by killing innocents. And if you watch the guide I've made on this weapon of how to get it, it also shows you how to level up the enchantment really quickly. Because at max rank, 
the power of the blade will absorb 30 points of health from your enemy. So that's a total of 41 base damage. But there are two really cool things that makes this weapon really great. First off, even though it's a two-handed weapon, it actually swings as fast as a sword. So you can absorb tons of health from your enemies with each swing because you're just swinging so fast. In fact, it's so ridiculous that you'll often find so long as you're in combat and you're like fighting something, you'll just be on full health. I actually made a two-handed character build based on this sword that lets you play on legendary difficulty at level 30 without needing to craft anything at all. You don't even need healing potions, that's how good it is. And you can find that build guide down below in the description guys. But the second thing is that this enchantment is unlimited, so you will never run out of it and you'll never need to recharge it again. It makes it so easy to use and it's just possibly one of my favourite weapons in the entire game. But now, we have number 8 in the list, the long hammer. This weapon may appear pretty crappy at first, but let me just fill you in on its trickery guys. It has a base damage of 21, which is the same as the Blood Scout Blade. However, this weapon has a unique enchantment that makes it swing 30% faster. So this actually gives you the best damage per second of any other two-handed weapon, even better than a Daedric Warhammer. And guys, the enchantment on the Longhammer doesn't actually count as an enchantment at all. So what this means is that you can use the Elemental Fury Shout, and this shout basically increases your attack speed. So you can now attack with this weapon stupidly fast, as you can see it's just ridiculous. And once you have all three words of the Elemental Fury Shout, it will increase your attack speed by double. So that's a total now of 130% faster attack speed, which gives you the best damage per second in the game. It's pretty damn crazy. And even though I said we weren't talking about crafting, if you go onto your enchanting skill tree, you'll find the Twin Enchanter perk, which lets you put two enchantments on a weapon. And you can actually go ahead and put two enchantments on the Longhammer weapon. I suggest using the Chaos Enchantment and the Absorb Health Enchantment, because this makes the weapon hit like a truck and also you're swinging 30% faster as well. The only thing you can't do if you enchant the weapon is use the Elemental Fury Shout as well, because it only works on weapons that haven't been enchanted. So next up guys, we are onto the best bows in Skyrim. Starting at number 7 then, we have the Nightingale Bow. But the Nightingale Bow has a base damage of 20. That's only one less than a Dragonbone Bow and it also fires slightly faster. The bow has a unique enchantment called Nightingale's Storm, but this enchantment's power level actually depends on your level that you are when you find the weapon. So if you wait and get this weapon when you're level 46 plus, it will have the most powerful version of the enchantment on it, and this will freeze the target for 30 points of frost damage and also do 30 points of damage to the enemy's stamina as well. In addition to this, it also does 15 points of shock damage to the enemy's health and magicka. So in total now, this bow does a damage of 65 plus whatever arrows you're using on top of that. And the main advantage of this bow is that you can slow people when they're coming towards you because the bow has the frost effect. It's relatively easy to keep two enemies slow at the same time. So it's a really good bow if you want to like kite around your enemies so they can't actually hit you in close combat. And let's be honest guys, the bow's design does look insanely cool. But at number 6 in this list, the next bow in our countdown is Oriole's bow. A very intriguing weapon indeed. The bow has a base damage of 13. It also weighs half that of a dragon bow bow, so it actually fires really quite fast. But once again guys, let's take a look at the enchantment on this weapon, as that is where the weapon truly shines. It does 20 points of sun damage, and if the targets that you're fighting are undead, they take triple damage, and that's just crazy man. So the bow does a base damage of 33, plus the arrows you're using, and nobody in the game has a resistance to sun damage, so Oriole's bow is actually really, really powerful. 
But then guys, if you attack an undead target, the enchantment does 60 damage instead. So that's a total of 71 damage to undead targets. And considering over a third of the enemies in Skyrim are undead, such as the Draga or Vampires, you'll be wrecking face with this one. But that isn't all guys, because after you finish the Dawnguard questline, you will get access to two unique arrows, either the Sun Hallowed Arrows or the Blood Cursed Arrow. Now if you use the Sun Hallowed Arrows and you fire one at the sun, then it will rain down a meteor shower of flaming beams of sunlight. Not only does this look insanely cool, but each one will do 80 damage to whatever gets hit by it. And again, it will do even more damage to vampires. So you're literally just raining down a shitstorm on your enemies. Alternatively though, if you fire a blood cursed arrow at the sun, it will just blot the sun out completely, turning the sky blood red. This is incredible if you're a vampire, because it now means that you get all your nighttime buff effects straight away and you don't have to worry about being out in the sunlight and so on. And if you use one blood cursed arrow on the sun, the sun's going to be blotted out for a whole day in game. And you can do this repeatedly because the blood cursed arrows are quite easy to get. You can literally just live in permanent darkness if you want. So Oriel's bow is just an amazing bow for all these reasons. Even if you're a vampire or not a vampire and you're fighting vampires, it's still useful. It's still really good. So now we have the fourth and final bow in the list. The best bow in the game. It is not a bow, oh no, it's an enchanted dwarven crossbow. The weapon has a base damage of 22, so it's actually even more damage than a dragonbone bow. And guys, the crossbow attacks will actually ignore 50% of your enemy's armour, which is pretty great versus some opponents. Basically guys, the dwarven crossbow hits like a truck, and it also has access to some unique elemental bolts. You use bolts instead of arrows, and these bolts will actually explode on impact for 15 points of either shock, fire or frost damage to your enemies. So that's a total of 37 damage, and we haven't even enchanted the weapon yet. The bolts themselves though are really good because you can obviously swap them out for like frost or fire, depending on what kind of enemies you're fighting, so you can use their weakness against them. But the Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow can also be enchanted guys, on top of its current effect, so you can add another two enchantments to it that will make it even more powerful. And once again guys, I suggest using the Chaos Enchantment and also the Absorb Health Enchantment, because that just makes this bow absolutely wreck face. I find the only drawback of the crossbow compared to the bow is that it's got the slowest reload time and it also makes a noise when you fire it. But it does hit like a truck so it is actually really good for sneak attacks. But it is up to you guys to decide what works best for your character. I've already done a crossbow versus bow video comparison if you want a complete breakdown to their pros and cons. And that video can be found below in the description if you guys want to check it out. But now, up at number 5, we're talking about the best dagger in the game. And we're going with the idea that we're not going to craft or enchant anything. So in this spot, we have the Blade of Woe, with a base damage of 12. Now, this is actually the same base damage as a Dragonbone Dagger. That's pretty good. So it's the best you can get unless you're using the enchanting skill or the smithing skill as well. Now, the nice thing is, is that you can get this weapon very early on in the game before you would usually have access to a Dragonbone Dagger. It also has an enchantment that absorbs 10 points of health each hit. And as daggers are obviously pretty fast when they attack, that's not too bad. But to be honest, you're not going to be really using it in combat anyway. Why would I use a dagger anyway? Its damage is pretty mediocre compared to all the other weapons on this list. Well my friends, the only reason this dagger is on this list is because it has the highest base damage for the Assassin's Blade perk, which is found in the sneak skill tree just here. This makes your dagger do 15 times more damage when you do a sneak attack with it. So with that perk, and the dagger, we will have a base sneak attack damage of 180. That is pretty damn good guys. You can of course improve the weapon at a grindstone as well in order to increase that figure further. And I know some of you guys are probably going to be wondering why Mahiroon's razor is not on here. Now the razor does have the potential to instantly kill somebody. 
but it's only got a 2% chance to actually do that. So obviously guys, it's much better to have the extra damage every single hit with the Blade of Woe, even if the Razor is the coolest looking weapon in the game. You can find out how to get both down below in the description anyway guys. But now my friends, we must venture onwards. Onto the one-handed weapons. So, in at number 3, we have Chilren. And once again guys, the damage and power of this enchantment will depend on your level before you pick it up. So if you want the most powerful version, you're going to need to wait until level 46 plus. And then Chilren will have a base damage of 15, and that's the same as a Dragonbone Sword. But more importantly, it will have an epic enchantment, which does 30 points of frost damage to your enemy's health and stamina, for a total of 45 damage now a hit every time you swing your blade. And it also has a chance to actually paralyze them for two seconds as well. And the paralyze enchantment in Skyrim on this weapon is just insane. When you paralyze somebody, they'll fall to the ground for a couple of seconds so they can't actually attack back or even block your attacks. So you can just stand there and just like slash away at them some more while they're trying to stand up. And then after that, you might even activate the paralyze effect again so you can just repeatedly paralyze people until they're dead. But simply put guys, this weapon is very effective and it looks really cool as well. The blue glass like a appearance looks incredible and you can in fact get this weapon very early on at level one but you will pick up the weaker version if you do get it early on obviously the weaker version of the enchantment only does five frost damage but it will still paralyze people for two seconds so it's actually quite good to get early on as well next on our list we have another weapon from the nightingale set in at number two it's the nightingale blade an absolutely amazing sword. And once again, guys, the damage and power of this enchantment will depend on the level you are before you come and pick it up. So if you want the most powerful version of the weapon, wait until you're level 46 plus, and then the Nightingale sword will have a base damage of 14, like a Daedric sword, and one less damage than a Dragonbone sword. But guys, it has an incredible enchantment. The enchantment on the Nightingale Blade will absorb 25 points of health and stamina. It's so good because you can just sit and absorb your health back, kind of like with the Ebony Blade. And we can also though absorb the enemy's stamina from them, which means they can't block you and you get more resources for power attacking and also blocking. So it's a pretty solid weapon. You have a total base damage of 39 in total, which is less than Chilren, but it helps you not die on harder difficulties. Also, no enemies in the game have a resistance to absorb health, so you'll do that full 25 points of damage as well. So it is actually better compared to Chilren's Frost Enchantment. The only issue I have with this weapon is how fast the enchantment actually runs out and just drains. So if you're using it, I highly suggest you get the Azura's Black Star. This is basically an unlimited soul gem which lets you fill it up and then recharge the weapon and the soul gem will never break. So you can find Azora's Black Star down below in the description if you want to find that for yourself because it's very useful for a few weapons in this list. But now we have the ultimate weapon in Skyrim. The best of the best. Number one on the top 10 best weapons in Skyrim list. It is Windshear. At first glance, you may think that I am kidding. With a base damage of 11, it's not really much to write home about. But it's enchantment. It's enchantment is just stupid. It says that bashed attacks made with this weapon have a chance of knocking the enemy down. But that isn't how it works at all. Oh no. What it actually does, guys, is make everyone you hit recoil and get staggered. Even if it's a dragon or a giant, it doesn't matter. So every time you hit the enemy, they'll get staggered. This means that you can literally just stand there in combat with a dragon and it won't be able to do anything against you because it just repeatedly gets staggered over and over again. The weapon is just so broken. The only drawback is that the weapon just doesn't hit very hard, so you're gonna have to stand there for a bit longer. But you are technically invincible because, you know, the enemy can't attack you back. But what I do suggest doing is putting wind shear in your offhand and then putting another more powerful weapon like the nightingale blade in your left hand. So now you can just hit with wind shear to stagger the enemy and then you can hit them with the nightingale blade to do lots of damage. And the best thing is they cannot do a single thing to stop you. Wind shear even works through blocks. There's nothing anyone can do to block your attacks. 
even versus multiple foes, you can just deny their power attacks and laugh at them. Don't forget to check out the description below for a guide on how to get each weapon in this video though guys. And if you haven't already, please make sure you smash that subscribe button because I make daily Skyrim builds walkthroughs and weapon and armor guides every single day on the channel that you will not want to miss. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram where I post all my guides as soon as they come out. And guys I really hope you enjoyed this top 10 best weapons in Skyrim video. If you did you might also like to check out my build video guides which show you how to make your character in, an, in the most interesting ways to take advantage of the best weapons in the game. So like how they synergize with the different shouts and also the different armors to use with the build. You can find my full build playlist down below linked in the description. But thanks again for watching me ESO and I will see you loyal subscriber in the next Skyrim video guide. Have a fantastic day and goodbye. Don't forget that you can receive text and or email notifications from my channel every time I release a new video. Underneath the video just hit subscribe and then hit the bell next to it. You will now get notified as soon as I release a new video. Welcome to the ESO squad guys.